Alright, hey everybody, my name is Brent, welcome to the show, you're listening to the LJS Podcast, episode number 15, where today I'm going to be talking about five steps to learning jazz language by ear, five steps to learning jazz language by ear, I'm so glad that you're here listening in, joining in on this conversation, this is uh, a topic that I feel is incredibly important to becoming a better jazz musician. Um, but before we dive into the show today, before we dive into this topic, uh, I just want to say that if you get any value out of today's show, consider adding value back this podcast. It's 100% funded by listeners like you. So if uh, you're on the website, there's a support button below the player. You can click on that. You can leave us a monthly or one-time donation. If you're not on the website, you can go to learnjazzstandards.com slash support. And if everybody who listens to this show gave $3 a month, that would be less than 10 cents a day. Uh, we would be golden. We would be doing amazing we'd be doing excellent uh we could add more episodes to the show we could get more special guests on uh so if you get value at today's show consider adding value back all right so before i go into these five steps to learning jazz language i first just want to uh clarify why we're learning jazz language by ear and not by reading sheet music for example and and also, what kind of jazz language I'm talking about? What do I mean by jazz language? Uh, and, and today, I'm kind of mostly talking about two uh, forms of learning jazz language. And the first one is learning solos by the greats or licks by the greats, little musical ideas. Um, but just going to recordings and listening to what the great jazz players have done both back in the past and even now. And, and just learning that language uh, by them. And I'm also talking about jazz standards. You know, we, of course, we always talk about learning jazz standards, how important that is to learn the repertoire, how they're the vehicles that jazz musicians use to improvise and in and, and kind of a springboard on from there to even doing original music. So those are kind of the two types of jazz language I'm talking about, learning jazz standards, also learning jazz solos and musical ideas, licks, whatever you may call them. Um, and why would we learn these things by ear and not by reading on a piece of paper? That's something incredibly important to talk about. And the main thing to understand is that in jazz, the ear is the most important thing to develop. You want to be developing your ear at all times because the ear is key to becoming a great improviser, to be able to play what you are hearing in your head. Uh, if you're reading a piece of paper, if you're reading sheet music for a jazz standard, you're reading a transcribed jazz solo, it's not necessarily that there's something wrong with that. I, I think those are fine things to use as references, as tools, um, as secondary tools. Um, but what they're not doing is they're not training your ear. They're kind of just telling you what the information is and having you just kind of play it. But you learn things so much better when you learn it by ear, when there's a little bit of struggle. Uh, it helps you internalize music. It helps you to uh, just start hearing the sounds rather than just relying on muscle memory or your intellectual knowledge. So, so many reasons why to learn stuff by ear. But the thing is, a lot of people... You know, come to me and they say, yeah, but it's so hard to learn things by ear. I can't hear the notes go by. I can't hear the harmony. I don't know how to do it. It's very difficult. And the, the answer is yes. Learning jazz language by ear is not the easiest way <laughs> to learn jazz language. It is the best way, though. Uh, so I kind of want to go ahead and go into these five steps. Hopefully, some of these things will be able to help you at least just look at it from a, a certain perspective uh, a goal-oriented perspective to attack learning jazz language by ear. So let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so the first step to learning jazz language by ear, uh, it's the by far the most important step it's listening, okay? So the first step is listening. You gotta listen a lot to whatever you're trying to learn. So say you're trying to learn a jazz solo, okay? You gotta listen to that solo all of the time. Listen to that piece of musical language a lot. I used to 
uh, walk around with my earbuds in all the time when I was commuting around New York City, and I would be constantly listening to the next solo I was trying to learn and just trying to ingest that and get that into my ear. If you're learning a jazz standard, by all means, listen to as many different kinds of versions as possible so that you just have that song saturated into your mind and you can hear how all kinds of different bands and artists performed those songs. It's so important. It's so important. Listen, 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 listen. It's the number one best practice that you can do. If you're not listening to start with a lot, you're not going to be able to learn it by ear very easily. If you're kind of just like, well, I, I want to learn this solo. I heard it once. And then you start immediately trying to learn it on your instrument. Well, you're going to have a lot harder time doing that because it's not already in your your mem your memory it's not really being saturated into your ear you're not familiar with it so you need to familiarize yourself with whatever musical content you're trying to learn whether that be a jazz standard whether that be a transcription so listen 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 that's the first step now the second step uh sort of tags along with this and that is be able to sing it, okay? Be able to sing whatever jazz language you're learning before you even touch your instrument. So the first step, you haven't touched your instrument. You're just listening. The second step, you haven't touched your instrument. You're actually just trying to sing. So if you're, again, learning a solo, um, maybe you're just trying to learn the first chorus of this solo. Uh, be sure that you can sing all of that solo before you even touch your instrument. Because again, if you're going up to your instrument completely blind, not really knowing in your ear what that sounds like, it's gonna be so much harder because there's two steps, knowing and hearing the music and then translating it to your instrument. Those are the two steps. Don't make them harder by combining them all into one step. So be able to sing it first. If it's the melody of a jazz standard, be sure that you can sing that melody first, okay? If you can sing that melody already, that means all you have to really do is translate it onto your instrument. And that's the level we want to get to. We just want to get to being able to hear things and being able to translate it onto our instrument seamlessly and in the moment. That's really the end goal. That's how you become a great improviser. That's what we're always striving for as jazz musicians is just to be able to express the music that we're hearing. So you have to practice that. You have to practice that. So start by just being able to sing whatever it is. And even maybe if you're, you could go a step further, maybe you're a bass player, maybe you're not a bass player. Maybe you want to be trying to sing the bass notes of each chord in the harmony that's going by. Uh, so that's something also to consider. But try just to be able to sing whatever musical content you're trying to reproduce. Um, okay, number three. Learn small phrases at a time on your instrument. A big mistake is, you know, you're trying to learn a bunch, a bunch of notes, you know, over a long stretch of, of time, a lot of measures, and you're not really getting it. So this is more of a memorization thing than actual hearing thing. Um, is just learn little phrases. But at the same time, it is a hearing thing because you know, it's okay just to learn three notes to start because that's that's a big problem a lot of people have. They're trying to conceptualize too large of phrases of information. So therefore, they can't actually hear all the notes going on. Just, you know, be on your computer, be on your MP3 player, be ready to stop and start that track. Learn the first three notes, okay? Listen to it. Hopefully, you already know what it sounds like because you've already been listening and singing, but just play those first three notes. Okay, now figure that out on your instrument. Where does that lie in your instrument? Okay, listen to the next three notes. You know, it's the practice room. It's the laboratory. You can slow things down, break it apart. There's no shame in doing that. So just start with small phrases. Just start with small phrases and build on from that. It's going to help you understand the music that you're playing. It's going to help you learn it incrementally. And, and it's going to help your ear be able to focus better. That's the biggest thing. It's going to help you focus better. Uh, that's probably the number one thing that makes it hard for people to hear music just by ear. It's, it's because they can't focus on the information. If you just narrow it down, make it as small as possible, uh, it's going to really help you focus. It's really going to help you actually hear those notes come out. Um, so learn in small phrases at a time and then build and learn the next phrase and the next phrase and the next phrase, whether it be the melody of a standard 
or a solo or the harmony. Um, but number four, speaking of harmony, uh, number four is learn the harmony. Whether you, whether it's just you're learning a solo, you should still know the harmony of the song you're you're you know, you're you're learning a solo over top of. So you know if if you're learning a solo over top of all the things you are, but you don't really know the chord progression to all the things you are. Well, you're not going to completely understand what you're actually playing. You might be learning some great uh, language, but you're not really knowing what you're applying that language to. It's all about context, right? You need to understand the context of the language that you're learning. So make sure you know the harmony, regardless of whether it's just you're learning a jazz standard where, yeah, you're required to know the harmony, or if you're learning a jazz standard. So now this is the question I always get from people. Well, how do I learn the harmony by ear? You know, I'm so tempted. I just want to rush to the sheet music and just see what the actual chords are. Isn't that much easier? Well, yeah, it's it's easier. Like I said, that would be the easier route. But if you're able to hear harmony by ear, wow, wow, you're you're way ahead of the game. That's that's what you want. You know, the same as hearing melodies by ear. If you can hear the harmony by ear, you're you're ahead. You're doing really good. That's that's gonna really help you uh, big time in in the genre of jazz to be able to hear harmony by ear. Uh, so here's some tips, okay, to learning how to learn the harmony by ear. The first one would be listen to the bass player, okay? So really focus on the bass player. Try to listen to the roots, you know, because more often than not, the bass player is going to be playing, uh, you know, the roots. Listen especially to beats one and three. Uh, they're not always playing the roots. Let me let me say that. They're not always going to be playing the roots. You know, sometimes they're going to be wandering around. Uh, but listen really hard. Listen really hard to that bass player. The bass player is going to, in general, tell you the direction of the harmony, where it's where it's moving to, where it's going. So the first thing is, you know, when you're going through, try to ignore all the other instruments playing. You know, try to phase out the noise and just listen to the bass player. Listen to what the bass player is doing. And then the second thing you want to do is after you've listened to the bass player, you have an idea of what the harmony is, fill in the blanks by really listening to the comp instrument, the accompaniment instrument. So whether it's the piano player or the guitar player, listen in really hard to try to hear what quality of chord are they playing? Are they playing a dominant chord? Are they playing a minor chord? Are they playing a major chord? Okay. Uh, and that would be a separate study into itself. If you're not quite sure what a major uh, seventh chord sounds like or a minor seventh chord or a dominant seventh or an altered uh, dominant seventh, it's time to check that out. You know, sit down with the piano, uh, sit down with, with another comping instrument and just work on those things first, just trying to hear what those chords sound like. Um, that's going to really help you out if you're just struggling hearing it in context. So yeah, listen to the comp instrument second, just to try to fill in those blanks. You might know what the roots are, but you don't necessarily know what the quality of the chord is. Um, so that's important. And the and the other thing too is start learning to recognize popular chord progressions in jazz. If you can recognize what a two five one sounds like, well, you're way ahead of the game. You know, uh, classic example: two five ones, autumn leaves. It's chock full of major and minor two five ones. Be able to recognize those because if you can recognize those, you don't actually have to really listen so hard to, you know, exactly what they're playing. You just kind of can sort of hear it. You're like, that's yeah, a two five one in the key of B flat, whatever it may be. So be able to recognize popular chord progressions: one six two five one, minor two five ones. Uh, recognize blues progressions, all, all, all kinds of things like this. So just try to get your ear attuned to these things. And all this comes with practice. All this comes with practice. Okay, so uh, the last fifth step is repetition. Repeat, 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 repeat. Again, more of a memorization kind of uh, a concept here. But that's part of it, you know, and that's the part that sheet music often it, it leaves out. It doesn't really work that part of your brain as much. Even if you're, you know, reading it and trying to memorize it that way, well, you know, it, it, it just slows that process down. So repeat over and over again. Like I said in step three, 
learn small phrases at a time, right? So when you learn that small phrase, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it so that you know it really well. It's stuck in your ear, stuck in your head. And then you move on to the next phrase and you repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. And then you repeat the first and the second phrase together and so on and so forth. So repetition, really just keep listening, listening, listening. And that's what it comes down to. It's all about practicing this. It's not easy to learn jazz language by ear. It's not the easiest way. So what you need to be doing is repeating over and over and over again so that you can hear these things in your head translate it onto your instrument. It's not easy to do this, but if you practice it, and I guarantee you, you can do this. You can do this. Don't fall back to the sheet music right away. It's okay to use it as a reference, but really focus on learning jazz language by ear. I guarantee you, I guarantee you that if you do this, your jazz playing is going to improve. I really believe that. I really believe that for you. So be sure to learn jazz language by ear. Okay, that's all for our show today. Thanks so much for joining me. I uh, hope you got something out of this today, learning your uh, these five steps to learning jazz language by ear. And if you have anything else to add, if you have any comments to make on today's episode and you're on the website, leave us a comment below. We'd love to hear from you. And, uh, you know, this is a community. We're always about learning from each other, not just me. So I want to hear from you. Leave us a comment in the comment section below. Um, also, really quickly, just want to plug my ebook, 15 Essential Jazz Etudes. Uh, it's a great ebook just to learn jazz language. Uh, and it, it also comes with some tracks so that you can actually learn them by ear first. And they're really uh, focusing on helping you learn jazz language. Uh, just spell out the chords. So if you're someone who's having a hard time hearing, chord changes in your solos. This is a great book for you to check out, 15 Essential Jazz Etudes. You can find it, go to learnjazzstandards.com and then click on the store eBooks and you'll find it there. It's available for C instruments, uh, bass and guitar tabs. So check that out there. And remember, if you got any value from today's show, consider adding value back. You can leave us a one-time or monthly donation by clicking the support button below the player if you're on the website or going to learnjazzstandards.com slash support. And next week, we're going to be coming out with episode number 16 of the LGS podcast. We're looking forward to seeing you then. Mm-hmm.